fact that brands can come and go as quickly as they do today um, is starting to create a lot of anxiety for executives. People have realized that brand is more than the television commercials you run. Everyone has to live the brand promise or the brand falls over. Most leading brands are sort of waking up to the fact that they need to have an antenna that says what's coming next. If you don't think there's four guys in a garage somewhere right now trying to destroy your business, you're either naive or very arrogant or very successful. Especially given the rapid changes in technology, um, all businesses are subject to potential disruption. The unpopular path may actually have the really clever answer. This idea of sort of not being disposable to your consumers is a powerful one. How are you so special to a consumer that they're not willing to go and you know go to the competition or go check out a disruptor coming into the market? What is your secret sauce and how do you keep it sort of secret and special with your consumers? I think the reason um, a lot of brands are, are diminishing is they become very complex to, to deal with. One of the things that at SAP we're very proud of is, is the mantra of simplicity. So in terms of our brand messaging, it's if you simplify anything, you can do everything. I think Best Buy's made a transition. We went from being disrupted to now we're trying to disrupt the businesses of others by leveraging the assets that we have. The reason why we're thriving and taking market share is that we've learned to adapt. It's less about promoting your product now and more about connecting in new ways. Leadership brands today aren't just creating superior experiences. Leadership brands today um, are also creating an emotional connection. They are based upon maybe an idea or a belief. They're participating in social causes, right? They're leaders in their community. And participation, I think, is an, um, something that is most misunderstood by, uh, by brands these days. Participation means that you are becoming an, a member of the brand that is equally rewarded and equally uh, adjusted to the brand. We're more intimate with brands today. We feel more connected with brands today. We hold them accountable on a, on a whole different level. You do have a tremendous amount of innovation occurring, but I think consumers see the downside of that as well. Uh, and there's a lot of nervousness around privacy and what are companies doing with their information. It takes a lot to build trust. It takes very little to lose trust. You know, however large the company gets, you know, however distributed and global, you know, you have a set of employees who, you know, live the culture, form the culture, know the culture, and that delivers the brand every day. Every brand has to be trustworthy. If you ask me what a brand is, a brand is a promise that is made between an organization and its customers. And that's where things can go so wrong, is when you break that promise with your customer. We're really talking about transparency um, in how we speak and communicate. Uh, we're talking about um, protecting privacy uh, of people's because we are so often the um, keeper of very confidential information. We've recently, on a global basis, through a lot of conversation that took place in town halls and with our people, have very gotten very focused on what our purpose is in, as an organization, to build trust in society and solve important problems. And it's real easy to put that on the website, but what we have to do as a brand is make sure that all our people are thinking about that every day. My intuition is that there are many small brands who lead in new niches that didn't exist 5, 10, 15 years ago. The interesting challenge for those companies is how do you make it through two cycles. When Gilt launched, there was unlocked a huge pinup demand. We still have great brands at great prices, but it's really important that we have a point of view to help break through the clutter of the competitive landscape because now there's more places out there competing for the same consumer and the same wallet. True disruptors really are not out to seek or disrupt people. They're really out to create new markets because that's where the green fields are, right? Um, and it's about creating opportunities that didn't exist before. Mm -hmm.